record after a short break. Uh, appearances are as they were before. I would just note Attorney Opper's not at the table, but I presume she'll be back shortly. Uh, I will be advising uh, the clerk to have the jurors brought out. And then I'll ask you, sir, to call the defense next witness. Can we address subject matter jurisdiction and still has to be proven for the record? I decline to do so. Your objection is noted for is the Is the audio record. on? Your objections noted for the record. Is the audio on? Yes, it's on, sir. It's on. It's on. So we're not going to address subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven for the record? For the record, I have addressed it. No, you haven't, haven't proven it for the written, record. And your objections noted for the have record. Have you proven subject matter jurisdiction for the record? Have you proven it? Has the prosecution proven it? Oh, okay. Email that to her and print it off. So that's your judicial determination that you don't have to answer that, Your Honor, being a public servant? I was talking to my clerk. I didn't hear what you asked. The jury's coming in. You heard what I asked. I actually did not. Come on. Come on, Your Honor. Come on now. Come on now. We, we, we got to cut that out. You know you have to prove subject matter jurisdiction. You know that. You have to honor your oath of office. You know that. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The defense may call its next witness, please. Give me one second. I'm trying to make sure I got this paperwork since I'm being rushed to judgment. Calls Erica Patterson. And thank so, you. We'll have her brought in. Since I'm being rushed to judgment. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. You may recall it's upper riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my coach, Teresa, who is across from you and on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record. Erica Patterson. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Are the ones spelling the name? I believe it's on the record from previously, but go ahead. You can spell your first and last names, please. E R I K A P A T T E R S O N. Just one second, Your Honor, I'm trying to find some. 
relevant paperwork here. I'm just gonna start the questioning. I'm not seeming to find paperwork that I just had on the table for some reason, odd reason. Patterson. Good morning. So what do you do for a living? I have my CNA certificate. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to the <coughs> evening of November 21st, 2021. Uh, do you recall what you were doing that evening? I was hanging out with my friend Corey at Frame Park. I had spoken to you, Mr. Dale Brooks. You came out there at Frame Park and met me after Corey, Miss Corey separated from me with her friend. Me and you got into an argument. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pursuant to the question? I am answering your question. I, I was referring to the judge. I was thinking I think that kind of got a little ahead of. Oh, Mr. Brooks, just uh, I'll let you interrupt the answer, and you can ask a follow up. I I apologize. I was instructing the clerk to turn up the volume. Um, so go ahead, ask your question. Same question? Sure. What were you doing the evening of November 21st, 2021 before linking up with the alleged defendant? Hanging with my roommate at the time at Frame Park. And what were you and your roommate doing? I'll object. We covered this ground during her testimony previously. Objection. And grounds for, I object to that and grounds for the objection on behalf of the state. Mr. Birch, we did cover many of these topics previously. So if there's new topics, please go to those. I'll give you a little bit of leeway uh, to lay some foundation, but go ahead, ask your question. That's, that's what the objection the is from the state is overruled. <coughs> Do you remember the question? You asked me what we were doing at the, at the park with Corey? Is that your question? Yes. We were drinking, I was drinking Mike's Hard Beverage. Do you recall um, around what time of the evening it was when you and your uh, roommate arrived at the park? I do not remember. We left where we were staying a little around afternoon, a little bit around afternoon. <coughs> Do you remember what time it was? Do you recall? Do you recall having uh, any phone interactions during that time when you and your roommate were at the park? Phone interactions, yes. Do you recall who they were with? You. What do you mean by you? Daryl Brooks. Is that usually the name you refer to the alleged defendant by? No. Would it be fair to say that um, during those uh, phone interactions, um, there was a talk of you guys meeting up 
Would that be fair to say? Yes. Um, do you recall, to the best of your recollection, what time that would have been at? No, I don't remember. It was throughout the day. I'm sorry, you, are you making references to the, the phone conversations being throughout the day? Yes. And so at some point, would it be fair to say that you did meet up with the alleged defendant? Yes. Do you recall what time that was? I just told you no. Do you recall if you were still at the park during that time or had you moved locations? Still at the park. And was your roommate still present with you at that time? No, she left. We went separate ways. I stayed at the park and she went her other way with her friend. Do you recall who that friend was? Nick. I'm assuming, or let me back that up. Um, would it be fair to say that at some point during the meetup with the alleged defendant, things got a little chaotic? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall if at that point you were still at the park? When we met up? Yes. Well, we were at the park for a second, then we drove around. Where did you drive to? Around, then me and, him, me and you, Mr. Brooks, were arguing in the car. We went out, this, this is a street, it's like a hill, we went out there. And then me and you got into an altercation. I got out of the car, walked back towards Frame Park. Oh, well, wait, again. Hold on, she's answering okay. your question. Um, you asked yes. her where you drove around. Go ahead. And then, yes, ma'am. And then I was walking down the street when I left your car. And that's when you followed me. And I walked back towards Frame Park. And you were following me. Made reference to walk back to Frame Park. Uh, I don't know the exact street name. It was the walk back down the hill. I don't know the exact street name. Did you at any time, <clears throat> sorry, did you at any time during your uh, travels back to Frame Park, did you at any time notice that uh, there was something going on in the, the area? No. When I got to Frame, I was too worried about walking back to Frame Park. When I got to Frame Park after I left it, that's when I realized there was something going on. And did you ever arrive back at Frame Park? Yes. And what did you do when you arrived back at Frame Park? 
I called my friend Corey and told her that me and Mr. Brooks got into an altercation. Mr. Brooks was following me. Um, I went back to the SUV, the car, and you argued with me somewhere. I walked back across the street, and by that time, Miss Corey had already walked toward us to meet up, meet up with me. You made reference to you uh, calling uh, your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, did, do you recall, well, let me back up a little bit. Did you call your friend Corey or the friend that she had left you to hang out with? Corey's phone, I kept calling her phone. Her phone kept going to voicemails and I called Nick's phone. He put Corey on the phone. I said, Daryl Brooks had just hit me. I want to back up a little bit, if I may, to the day prior, November 20th of 2021. Do you recall what you were doing that day? Well, where I was staying at the shelter at first, I was arguing still with Mr. Brooks all throughout the day. Um, me and Corey had left, and Corey and I stepped away, and I went back to Frame Park. I went to Frame Park, that's where I met you at. I mean, you also, Got into argument that day, but we didn't drive around. We're at the frame park. So you're saying that you and the alleged defendant. We're together the day of November 20th, 2021. Yes. Do you recall around what time that was? I do not remember. And you stated you were briefly with your friend Corey that day? Yeah, but she went a whole different direction. She didn't come to Frame Park with me. She turned on a whole different street right before Frame Park. Do you recall at any time on November 21st of 2021 being interviewed by a detective Guth? Yep. And do you recall giving a recorded a recorded a report at that time? I don't remember. Do you recall if you had given Detective Goof all the details of the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021? I didn't give him all the details, but I did the next day when I seen him. Hmm. 
funny. <coughs> Were you aware that it was reported there was in fact no incident on November 20th, 2021? That's not true. Objection. We'll just strike the answer and the question. Grounds. Lack of personal knowledge, hearsay. Um, sustained. I'll strike the question and the answer. The reason stated, sir, rephrase or. So can I show the witness the same paperwork that I attempted to show? No. And why not? Not relevant. How's it not relevant when that was just testified to? Wouldn't that be opening the door? No. Next question. Any reason why it would be reported no incident happened on November 20th of 2021? Same objection. Grounds? Some stacks on in evidence. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? The record speaks for itself. So, upon speaking to Detective Goof during the first interview, do you recall why you were not forthright with information? It wasn't that I was not forthright, I just didn't tell him everything right away. Why not? I don't know, Mr. Brooks. When speaking with a law enforcement officer, would it be fair to say that you should be truthful and honest? I was very truthful. I didn't tell him everything at once. I told him the next day, Mr. Brooks. And in the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021, were you injured? No. <coughs> well, you did hit me a little, both like a little. Were you injured? No, I didn't have any marks on me. Is that what you're asking? So where were you injured? By my lip. Objection. This the evidence. Grounds. Um, I believe the witness understood the question. She answered it. It may stand. Did your roommate observe any injuries from the alleged incident on, on November 20th, 2021? She knew about it, but there's, there's nothing visible on my face. Do you know if your roommate, do you know if your roommate had spoken with law enforcement about these alleged incidents? From November 20th of 2021 and November 21st of 2021? I don't know. <clears throat> Did she ever tell you yourself that she was interviewed by any law enforcement? I don't remember. So what time did you meet up with the alleged defendant on November 20th, 2021? I don't remember. It was morning time. Afternoon. Time. I didn't hear that. Afternoon.
and what were you doing prior to the alleged meeting up with the alleged defendant? Objection. Grounds? Asked and answered. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Asked and answered. When? Next question, please. When was it answered? So to the best of your recollection, you you can't recall why an alleged incident on November 20th of 2021 was reported to never happen. Objection. Grounds. Same reasons as the previous objections. Seems facts not in evidence. It's characterized as her prior testimony and irrelevant. I object to that respectfully and that's for a legal finding of fact and a legal reconsideration of that ruling, Your Honor. Denied. Noted for the record. Next question, please. I'm trying to figure out how something got pulled out of thin air. Hmm. Interesting. So it would be fair to say that you have a, a child in common with the alleged defendant. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Uh, is that the only child in common? Yes. You have any other children? Objection. Grounds. It has nothing to do with the case. Oh, sorry. Hold on. There's been an objection. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? The record speaks for itself. Next question. I, well, what was the record speaking for itself? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Not relevant. How is it not relevant? Next question, please. How is it not relevant? child that you have in, in, in common with the alleged defendant. How old is that child? 15. Do you keep regular contact with that child? Off and on. Describe what you mean by off and on. I'll object. Grounds. This is not relevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds. It's not relevant, sir. She answered it. Next question, please. And the child in common that you have with the alleged defendant that child live with you? No. Objection. Grounds? Relevant. Grounds. Sustained, not relevant. You don't have to answer that. Thank you. Thank you. Do any of your children live with you? Objection. Grounds? Relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Not relevant. <clears throat> that goes to the credibility, Your Honor, so how is it not relevant? The objection has been sustained. For relevancy. I object to that and would like to inform you that I intend to appeal that decision unless you want to give a legal reconsideration that, of that ruling. Noted for the record, I direct your attention to 906.16.
and the basis for the objection being sustained is it does not fall within the categories listed. Next question. Is that lawful law? Next question, please, sir. I'm getting here. This is lawful law. Wisconsin State Statute 906.16. <coughs> That doesn't answer my question, but okay. Did you meet the alleged defendant? Reno, Nevada. How long have you known the alleged defendant? 16 years. You made reference to meeting in Nevada. Do you recall where you met at in Nevada? No. I don't remember. to the alleged incident on, on November 21st of 2021, would it be fair to say that there's been no contact between you and the alleged defendant? Not since then, no. Answer was kind of low. Did you say no? I said no, not since then. So that that would mean, <coughs> assuming that would mean no contact at all via phone or anything like that. No. So my question would be. I don't know if you can see them from here, but do you recognize these pictures? Um, you need to show those to the state. The bail will take them. That's not proper procedure, sir. I'm going to object to those being shown to the witness. They have no relevance whatsoever to this trial. Yes, they do. And I'll get into how they have relevance. They've also never been disclosed to the state before this moment. Sustained. Sustained why? Not relevant. They, they are relevant. It creates foundation. And I can prove that. I'll take up the issue outside the presence of the jury uh, at the conclusion of this witness and if need be, bring the witness back in. But next question, please. And these need to be offered into evidence as well. Um, you stated to, that there's been no contact. How would the alleged defendant be, how would the alleged defendant obtain photographs from you if there's been no contact? Objection. Grounds. Suspect, not in Grounds. Sustained. Assumes facts not in evidence, not relevant. How is it not relevant? Photos just don't pop up out of the blue. Mr. Brooks uh, assumes facts not in evidence. No, and it's, any and it's facts. Point got the pictures right here. After facts. the alleged date of violation here, it's not relevant. Alleged violation. You're the correct. Record. After the date charged, that the dates that are charged for these allegations, yeah. you are absolutely correct. Thank you. <clears throat> I 
have. You would, since the evening of November 21st of 2021, have you attempted to contact the alleged defendant? Objection. Yeah. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Um, I'm gonna excuse the jury. I'll rise for the jury. <laughs> to why you believe the photographs and the questioning about contact after the alleged incident is relevant. It's relevant because these were sent by the witness. <laughs> it assumes a fact, not an evidence, but so what is, hold to? on, hold on. Tell me the basis you believe there's been communication and why you believe it's relevant to <laughs> It's, Her testimony. it's relevant because it was testified to. Her first time testifying, and then also uh, by uh, was the last guy Guth that he was told that the witness was supposed to be so deeply afraid of me and all this type of stuff. So if you're so deeply afraid and worried about somebody and this and that, why would you? Sneak or do have you want to open up the door to the other act's evidence of That's you? not open. No, 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 no. That's not Hear opening me out. the door. Hear me out. Oh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. These witnesses have been incredibly careful to abide by my rulings. Sometimes in a court of law, when there are pretrial rulings, the testimony of a witness needs to be said in such a way not to run afoul of that. This witness, Detective Guth, I believe Detective Casey and others, Corey Runkle, and even uh, Nicholas Kirby yesterday, this court has all had to stop them so that they didn't run afoul, or they've stopped themselves so that they didn't run afoul of the court's pretrial ruling on other acts of evidence between you and this witness. And I have been very, very careful to make sure that doesn't come in. But if you keep questioning her about whether she's afraid or not, or why she wouldn't have contact that. or not, you are opening the door to that testimony. How? All of how, my rulings does, have been does, made to prevent what could be seen right? as prejudicial in, uh, evidence. The standard's not prejudicial. The standard's whether it's unfairly prejudicial. It's but you can open the door Your to Honor, that, sir. It's unfairly president, uh, uh, prejudicial that I have a, a, a document stating that November 20th never even happened, but yet and still the witness you, can get on the stand and lie on the stand. Have you turned that document over to the state? Come on, man. Y'all know that's not right. Um, Y'all know that's not right. Then you need to immediately turn it over to the state right now. It may become relevant, but no one has seen it. When so, did you receive the so document? That, so what, so hold on. When did you? When, I'm having you make an offer. But when did you receive the okay, document? Okay, but that I just want to stay for the record, Your Honor, that that's that's kind of biased because the the state did the same thing yesterday with creating a ex exhibit right on the fly that didn't even exist that I didn't have. But that's then, not true. That's a misstatement no, that, of the that, of that the is evidence. true. No, she said it herself. No, marking an exhibit is not creating an no, exhibit. No, not marking an exhibit. She said We're not going to go down a tangent, sir. Right, I'm going to focus gonna on this, and I'm going to give you fair. the opportunity to fair. make a record. It's not right? fair. It's not fair. When right. did you receive <coughs> this document that you claim was sent by this witness? It, it's not claimed. It's for a fact. Sir, it hasn't been established yet. I need to make a record. So do y'all want, want, want the letter? I want to see the letter. I want to see the letter. Okay, so I got to. And I want to know when you received it. I got to bring that in. 
Every time this this is what I don't get. Every time I'm presenting something that needs to be made for the record and placed in the evidence, it's a problem. But the state can do it, no it's, problem. It's not, sir. There are proper procedures, and okay. I want well, you to make the a record. Procedure. If I don't, if you don't make a record, so then what? I can't it, make a ruling. It threw people off the loop. They weren't ready for it. They scared of it. That's what it is. Come on, man. <sighs> Mr. Brooks. Come on, man. Stop. When you you stop are it. you are stop even it. You're a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect your courtroom. I you respect do. you. You're a public servant, though. Your job is to be the referee. Is it or is it not? You stated so yourself on record that your job is being the umpire. Your Honor, can I ask to Ms. Patterson, please be excused? Yes, for you can be excused. Thank My apologies. You. My apologies, too, but it needs to be some truth. Especially when we're talking about stuff that didn't even happen, but they're allowed to get on the stand and say that it happened when they know it didn't happen. So let me make, I'm going to make a record about what this he's referring to man. in count 77. Okay. The Where, state, and what happened to that paper? Because it was on the table. Then when Mr. I come Brooks, back in, I need to make a record from. of a variety of so things. So who took my paper? And, and you keep interrupting me repeatedly today. I have shown an abundance of patience this morning. I've warned you repeatedly about being removed from the courtroom. And then every time I try to get into it, you, uh, meaning an explanation and make a record, you interrupt, you attempt to divert everyone from what is being done this very second. I didn't attempt to do anything. Yes, you do it repeatedly, okay, sir. Whatever. So you're doing it once again. Whatever, just make your record. The document that Mr. Brooks wanted to show Detective Guth and this witness was a letter sent from the state of Wisconsin to the court regarding count 77. The state sought to dismiss that count and they have prosecutorial discretion and I granted the request that the charge be dismissed. Why was the charge dismissed? And that's, I, I can't answer, I, it was dismissed because the request was made, sir. They don't need a reason. There's a, an abundance of case law about prosecutorial discretion. And they chose not to pursue that. My Your Honor, guess Your Honor, is maybe to simplify respect. things and to keep this tidy. I don't know. You know what? I'll indulge you. Attorney Upper, would you like to provide a basis for why the state sought dismissal of that charge prior to the start of this trial? Yes, Your Honor, because as Ms. Patterson just testified a short while ago, she did not have any visible marks or injuries from that event. And we did have the photographs of her injuries. We did not want to confuse the record as to whether or not there was a battery that occurred on November 20th. Your Honor, I object to that. What does, what does the letter read? You have the letter. You showed it to I, me, I sir. Try, yeah, and I'm, I've been trying to find it ever since I came back in, and now all of a sudden I can't. And now you're imputing, though, like somehow you're imputing the integrity of this court, no, the bailiffs of this state. You're accusing, frankly, everyone did of I moving point your finger, papers. Did I point the finger at anyone? Did I say anyone did anything? Not directly, but indirectly you did, So sir. how can you make you the assumption made, that I'm saying? Can I, I please make the someone? record without yes, you interrupting? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. I apologize. I appreciate that. Thank you. But you made repeated comments, sir, about the, I can't find my documents, I don't know what happened, things of that nature. When you came back out, uh, you took multiple minutes before you even asked your first question of Ms. Patterson. Um, and if I need to, I will have a bailiff put on the record that no one touched your table. Your Honor, did I say anyone touched my table? I didn't, you I didn't say you. You implied it, sir. But did I say that? You I, didn't, I never you stated said, it implicitly. I never asked the bailiffs, hey, did any one of you touch my table? I never said that to them. I just said, I can't find my paper, which is the truth. I'm, and the I'm way that down. you said it, like, hmm. I didn't point anyone with a, out, with, though. And like, well, that's the kind of interesting. Fair. I don't, I don't have a document that was just on my table. That is what you said. That's what I that said, effect. but I did not point the finger at anyone. So. I you can have see the if I letter. came in, Your Honor, with You've all been respect, given. I can see if I came in and said, hey, one of you moved something off my table, or if I would have directed that towards the state, or if I directed that towards the clerks or something like that, then it would be, that would be more of a validity to what you're saying. I need to continue with the record, sir. It's very apparent to me, sir, that every time 
I can't say every time because that would be an absolute, but many times throughout this trial, and especially the last two days, when the court makes a ruling that you disagree with, or I wanna make a record about some behavior of yours, or a, a further record about a ruling that you, uh, that was not in your favor, that you start peppering me with questions or comments statements, you question me about the law, you ask is it verified law. It is, from my perspective, a clear attempt to, to kind of turn us in a direction away from what we're doing, perhaps even to stall and to delay. I'm sorry That's my that way. That I'm making a rule, you're doing it again. I mean, because it has no validity. <laughs> so, I am trying to make a record outside the presence of the jury about a line of questioning you want to ask Ms. Patterson. Now I've reviewed repeatedly up on the bench 90608 and 90616, which are two of the primary ways you can attack credibility. I've referenced one of those previously. 90608 is evidence of character and conduct of a witness. I'm not going to read through it all, but it's limited to character for truthfulness or untruthfulness. It's not specific instances of conduct. It's character evidence, which frankly wouldn't even come from the witness who's testifying. All right, then there's the statute on bias, 906.16. All right, and none of the questions as I heard them went to a permissible topic under bias of witnesses. You generally said credibility. You did not give me any further explanation as to why you believed it was relevant to credibility. Now we have you uh, claiming that there's some document that was sent by the witness after the charges were filed uh, that apparently contained photographs, I think, I, and you can clarify the record momentarily when I'm done, um, that you believe goes to the credibility of this witness. So I need to ask a few questions about that, sir, to determine whether it has relevance to those issues. Number one, when did you receive this letter? I received this multiple letters, actually, over a period of time. It, it wasn't I refer to this one because this one had the pictures, but and why do you believe one, it was from to Ms. answer your Patterson. question? To answer your question with clarity. Thank you. Does it have a date on it? The letter? No, I didn't bring the letter. I brought the pictures because I thought, from my interpretation, I thought showing the pictures would be okay. How did it? How did I get these? So my mine was saying show the pictures they didn't they didn't come out of thin air the witness knows the that they sent me the pictures they know that well again it assumes facts that aren't here you're assuming this witness sent, sent it i don't know but even if she did what relevance does it have to her credibility before this jury it goes to the credibility because she's put on this facade of being so <laughs> afraid of someone but yet still, you know that we're not supposed to have contact, but you still sneaking behind and saying, oh, I wonder how you're doing. And, oh, this and this and that. Oh, I don't think no, she's ever said you. she was oh, afraid. Mm -hmm. I think that was the officers who may have uh, stated that. But I don't believe she but, ever said that. She specifically said today when you asked her why did you, it was either why did you go back or why did you have a look at my notes. And she it was said, why, I don't know. It was why weren't you forthright with all the details? That was the question. So again, I'm gonna ask you, even if this letter's from her, these pictures are from her, how does it Your relate Honor. to her credibility before the jury? Who else could the be who else could these pictures be from? I'm gonna ask you point blank, did you get a letter that's signed from her? I got what do you mean sign? No How do you know? Letters. What's your belief? Why do you have a belief that they are from her? I have multiple letters from her. You're not answering my question. Why do you believe the letters are from Erica Patterson? Because they were sent from Erica Patterson. Why else would I? Were they signed by her? What do you mean signed? Did she write her name on the letter? 
Was are it the content you, of the letter? Me? No, I'm not kidding you. I need to make a record, sir. You're making a statement that these letters are from her and that they're relevant to her credibility. Your Honor, I'm going to go out on the on the limb and, here. And I'm asking you why you have hold that opinion. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here and assume, which I know is true, you've never been in my position. You've never been in jail. So you've never received a letter from someone writing someone in jail. No one is going to suck. When you You're say not to answering me, my when question, you say to sir. Me, What's did, the basis why you believe they're from Miss Patterson? Is there some information in them that you that only she would know? Did she sign the letters? Is it a, is it penmanship that you recognize? Why do you believe they're from her as opposed to somebody else sending you information? Could be your mom. Why, could be I'm just saying. Could be anybody somebody, else. This is, you got to answer my question. It's called an honor, offer of this, proof. But you still got to understand why this this is this is mind boggling to me. Like how I got a child with this woman. How would I? Why would I not know her handwriting? But you have to have a foundation for these letters, sir. That might be this through your ridiculous. own testimony. So that I'm trying to figure out why you believe they're from her. Not all this other stuff about Are you I'm in serious? jail and I have a child. I'm trying to, act, I, I need to know. It's called an offer of proof. Are you serious? What do you believe? Why do you believe they're from her? I am serious. I need because they're that. from her. But you're assuming. Like how, how else am I supposed to answer that? I've given you a few reasons why it would lend to that Opinion. So it has to be it has to be put in a legal the term. The bottom line or is I need the letter. So if you're gonna question her on that, the state absolutely has a right to see the letter. So you you need to provide that letter. I'm not the bottom line is I'm not gonna allow any questioning without having that letter. So the state has the ability to question you about that or question this witness and to look at the veracity of what your claims are here. So when we, I may take an early lunch, and if that's in your cell, then you can go get it and bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Do you have the letter with so, you in court? I just said no. Okay. How many times I gotta say the same thing on, on, on record? You know, sometimes, sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. And, and I'm taking notes and I'm focused on probably a dozen things at the same time. But if I but if I say something under my breath, everybody seems to hear it. Everybody seems to hear it. In that a just quiet fine. courtroom, everybody yes, assumes, we can hear it very and clearly. Everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging. Or, Once again, you're doing this tactic. Because you tried it, it to it's not a tactic. It's facts. What we're talking it's about facts. To some other reason. It's facts. Because I, I find thing. it hard to believe that. Um, I'm going to let the say nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the state oh, make Stop. a record of why they Stop. believe it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. I've given you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe it. I didn't get these pictures from they, nobody else. Why was somebody else? The record will else? reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from. No, that you believe. That I know. All right. I'll ask the state their position on all of this. My position, Your Honor, is that these pictures, first of all, should not be admissible. One, because of a discovery violation. We've never seen them before. Two, because we have reason to believe that he did not get them from Erica Patterson. He is on a jail phone call talking to his mother, Dawn Woods, uh, about Dawn Woods sending these photographs to him. Now, that's a lie. I object Let today. the state make their argument without interruption, sir. That's a lie, though. Three, I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're going to go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has. He impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada. And for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. 
And that's further I'll more, jump to that. I'm not because sure. that's a lie. Let him at finish. The end of the day, Let him we, finish. We don't open the door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate all on the record. Since you think you know so much, once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on. We can open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. We, we can ask he's, that question is too. Then over the top animated right now. Do you know that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, let's I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour. We'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Dog and he can show it is inadmissible, you know she will not be questioned. <laughs> and under 90611, I will declare the cross-examination closed. You don't know where, Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Time, get your facts straight. So let's let's open the door on all of it then so we can get all of it on the record. Since you think you know so much. Did, did you know she said she was 18 when I met her? Did you know that? 